So in this tutorial, we're just gonna run through a fairly simple script in Cavalry and build a UI for it. And the idea here is you might have some task that you find yourself doing quite often. And so you'd like to build yourself a, a little shortcut effectively to get that work done more quickly. So here we've already got the script. This is it in the bottom here. And here is the UI that we've created. Um, all we need to do to, to run this is uh, select our ghost here and hit hover. And then if I hit play, you'll see that that's sort of got our ghost there hovering in place. All this script is really doing is creating an oscillator, it is then making a connection from the oscillator to the uh, position Y of our shape, and then a few other bits and pieces that we can run through through the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. First thing to notice is uh, my uh, workspace is a little unusual here. Um, this is not Cavalry's default workspace, it's really just intended to um, show off the script editor a little more so that we can see how everything goes together. So let's just start by clearing this out. And we'll start again and let's just delete our oscillator. And let's just put this back in place. Okay, so the first thing to do is really is just the simple part of showing a UI. And so all we need to do for that is UI.show. And if I run now, you'll see that that just pops up a little window for us. Okay. So we can also give that window a title. So let's go UI dot uh, set title. And then if we put this in brackets and in quotes, we can actually give it a, a title itself. So let's call this make hover. And then we just need a semicolon at the end there. So if we run the script now, you can see we've got our window and it's called make hover. Okay, so far so good. Let's just put some comments in here so that we uh, we can remember what we were doing. So this is set the window title and oh, this was show the UI. Okay, so the next thing to do is to set out some buttons. So let's just put a comment to uh, create the the inputs and we can start by declaring a variable and let's just call that button and then we're going to go equals new ui dot and then we need a capital b for button and then again we can give the button a title so let's just call this hover and semicolon Hit return and then we also needed our input so let's declare another variable call that input and this time we're going to go new ui dot uh, this is called a numeric field and again we need a uh, default value for that field so let's just do 50 for that and another semicolon now at the moment when we hit run script nothing will happen Firstly, that's because that I put a minus in there. But see, nothing's really happened. So we need to actually tell the UI to display these windows. Uh, sorry, these uh, buttons and inputs. So the way we can do that is UI.add. And then we can type, uh, let's do the input first. And then the same for the uh, button itself. So button. And now when we hit run, you can see that we've got our input and we can change this. And then we've got our hover button. Now when I click this, you'll see that nothing happens. And that's because we're asked to uh, implement an on click function for this button. So let's do that next. So after we've set out our variables, we can add our callback. So So this time, let's go button dot on click and let's create a function. And we need a, a curly brace and another one just to close that out. And then just a test, 
I'm just going to tab in here. Let's go console.log and let's just say hello to ourselves in here. Again, we just need uh, semicolons. And now let's do run script. And now let's click hover. And you see down here in the bottom in the message bar, we have printed out hello. Great, okay. We don't want to print out hello. We want to create an oscillator. So again, let's start by declaring a variable so that we can um, reference this again later on in our script. And let's just call this oscillator ID. And for this, we're going to, we're going to actually use a part of the API called api.create. Again, we need to put this inside brackets. And the first uh, piece of inf information we need is the layer type. Now you can get the layer type in Cavalry if I just create an oscillator here. If I um, copy, right click and go copy layer ID, you'll see that we've got oscillator hash, whichever number that is. You can see it's eight here because I've been messing around before this tutorial. Um, but the layer type itself is the bit before the hash. So we can just remove that and then we know that that is the correct call for that. And then we just need to give this a name. So let's just call this oscillator for simplicity. And again, so let's put a semicolon on that. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Yeah, so we created an oscillator. So that's great, but that doesn't really help. We also need to make a connection. Now in order to make that connection, we actually need to, we need to understand some of the other elements in the scene. In this case, our ghost. Now we can reference that by using uh, an API called get selection. So if we create another variable and let's call this cell, and then this time we're going to go API dot get selection. And we just need brackets for this and another semicolon. And because we also going to want to reference the value in our input as well, let's set a variable so that we can use that later on. So this one we're going to call hover. And this one's going to be, sorry, this one's going to be input dot get value. And that will just return the value, whatever specified in this input here. Okay, so now we can use this information to make a connection. Well, really we only need this first bit to make the connection, but uh, in order to make that connection, we can go api.connect, and then we want to select the output connection. So in this case, that is oscillator ID that we've specified here. And for this, we want to specify the what we call the ID or the output connection. So the way you get that connection I'm obviously showing this on the shape rather than the oscillator, but you can get that from here, or you can also get that from the top here in the attribute editor. So that's called the ID connection. We want to then take our selection. Now, because the because uh, get selection outputs an array, we need to actually specify which um, number in that array that we need. In this case, it's we've only got one shape, so it's just going to be zero. And we're going to set that to position Y of our shape. Now we can get the correct scripting path for that. If we right click on position, go copy scripting path, and then here we can see position Y. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste that in here. And then we just need a bracket and another semicolon. And now hopefully when we uh, reload this, that should now make a, we need to select our ghost. And we see we've made a made an oscillator and we've also made this connection. So what you'll see here is that our ghost is now moving up and down. But because we haven't really def we haven't used this value at all in our script, you can see that the oscillator is still set to minus 10 and 10. And really we want this to be minus 50 and 50. So let's set that up. So we can do that with api.set. Now for this, we need to open our 
brackets again. And we need to, again, we're setting oscillator ID. And then we need to set up a dictionary. And within this, we need to set the key. So this is going to be minimum. And then we need a colon. And then we can specify the value. Now, obviously, this would be 50 or minus 50 in this case. But actually, we already know this number. We've, we've set it in here. So we can set this as minus hover. And then we've got a comma. And then we want to do maximum. And then our value for that is going to be hover. Now, again, we can come in here and we can right click, copy scripting path minimum, copy scripting path maximum. So we've set those in here. And then we just need to close that out with the semicolon. OK, let's see what happens next. Let's delete this and run script. And if we hit play, OK, we're moving up a bit more. And then hopefully this should say minus 50 and 50 now. OK, great. So that's working. Another little thing we can do here is what you'll notice is if I run this script again with our ghost up a little bit higher, so higher in uh, Y, and then hit hover, you'll see that actually moves back down to the uh, to zero. And the reason for that is because obviously we are, select, we are setting minus 50 and 50 as our value. So we're kind of at naught when, uh, when we're on frame zero. So how can we set that? Well, you notice that we've got a value offset on the oscillator as well. So let's um, get the position Y of the ghost before we run the script and then use that to set the value offset on the oscillator. Let's just zero this out again, close this down. So for this, we need to set up another uh, variable. So let's call this, sorry, let's tab that in. Let's call this variable pos Y. And then for this, we want to go API get. And here we're going to, again, get our cell and we want the first of those. And then the attribute that we want to get is position dot Y. OK, and now we can use that down in our API set oscillator down here. Now, again, if I just create an oscillator manually here, you'll see here that we've got our value offset. If I right click and copy scripting path, you'll see that this is actually called offset behind the scenes. So that's a little gotcha. Once in a while, the, the nice names here may not match the scripting path behind the scenes exactly, um, but you can always get to them via that right click menu. So in here, we're going to go comma. We're going to put our offset in. And then we're going to say use pos y for that. So now, hopefully, nope. That's because that needs to be a colon. Now, if I move this up and hit, I'll just delete that, and hit hover. That did move, but that was just because our timeline was in here. But you can see that's now hovering around that position that we defined. OK, great. So that's all the functionality really complete. Um, let's move on to a couple of little tidy ups we can do with the UI itself. So personally, I would like these two to be on the same row. And we can do that by setting up uh, a horizontal layout. So what we want to do here is go set up another bar. And we're going to call this one H layout. And we're just going to put equals new UI dot H layout. Again, just be careful about capitals here. These are really important. OK, and now we just want to swap this where we say UI. Just going to copy this. We can just go add. So add those two now to our horizontal layout. And then we want to just say UI dot add. Uh, what do we call it? H layout. 
Okay, let's see if I've got that right. Yeah, okay. So now we've got those two things on the same row. What we'll notice is that um, there's a couple of just little misalignments here. This button's not quite as high as the input itself. So let's go through and tidy that up as well. So if we go back, back up to the top here, we can actually set this size. I'm going to type button dot set size. And for this, we're going to go a width of 80 and a height of 20. Oh, that needs to be a semicolon. And then likewise, let's do exactly the same. We're going to go input dot set size. And for this, let's go, let's go 60, 20. Percent. And run that again. Great, okay, so that's worked. But what you can see now is our UI has gone a little bit baggy. Now we can sort of push these things together by using stretch. So here we can type, uh, back into our layout again, we can type h layout uh, dot add, sorry, dot add stretch. And we can just copy and paste that down. So here, and now if we run that again, you can see that we've now got those. They're always going to stay in the middle of that layout. Um, and one last thing we could probably do, um, obviously you've created this script yourself, so you know exactly what this does. But if you're creating this for somebody else, you might want to put a, a tool tip here just to help them understand what this value is actually going to do. So again, if we go back up to the top here where we're defining our inputs, we can go input dot set tooltip and let's just say set hover distance and now when we run this again you'll see that our tooltip pops up here okay so i think that's about it really that uh, hopefully that shows you some of the ways that you can uh, put together scripts and UIs. Um, you can always refer to the documentation here. We've got the API module and the script UI uh, page are the two pages that we've used in this tutorial. And yeah, hope that helps and um, really look forward to seeing what you guys create.